Hey there, Stanislaw with Motion VFX, and in this tutorial, I'll teach you how to use the incredible M Transitions Mega Pack to make your edits more exciting. You can find the M Transitions Mega Pack inside the Transitions tab of Final Cut Pro. Then, click on the M Transitions Mega Pack in the selections. Inside this Mega Pack is 140 different kinds of transitions to fit just about every kind of style you can think of. You can hover over any of the templates to preview the transitions before you drag them into your timeline. All the different transitions are really easy to use. If you find one that you like, just go ahead and click and drag it in between any two clips in your timeline. That's all there is to it. Let's play that back. To set a new duration, just drag the edges to set a new time. If you're looking for more control, double click the transition to enter the precision editor. To close it again, just double click it again. Need to trim your footage? Grab the top handles of the transition to still trim your footage without affecting the transition. This transition has some text in it. To change any of that text, I'll just double click right in the canvas and replace my text. What's great about typing directly in the canvas is I can work very quickly and any changes I make will be in my edit. Each of the different transitions will have different controls, so some may have text fields and others may have different options. Let's take a look by using another transition. This cell phone is a great transition, but I think this one will work a little bit better. That splat is a great way to end this, but those particles may not fit with the theme of this. So I'm going to open up the inspector to make further changes to any of my transitions. I'll just select the transition in my timeline and within the inspector, I can turn off these particles or even change the colors. Let's make this a little bit more interesting. I'll go back into my transitions and I think I'll choose this X and place it at the beginning of my timeline. I think I'll add this really glitchy data mosh look in between our actor and the crowd. I may notice though that I don't have enough media to create the transition. When I click create transition, it'll shorten my clip, but that's not what I want. I'll undo that transition and let's talk about why that happens. Well, I can't drag any further to the right because I have no media available. So I'll have to shorten this clip before I can add a transition as the transition uses the media in between the two clips. Viewing it in the precision editor, I can see exactly how that transition works. I'll add one final one to create a little bit of movement in between these clips. Let's take a look at that. Let's see if we can add some transitions to make this next bunch of clips a little bit more exciting. What's great about this pack is there's something for just about everyone and almost every single need. So I'm going to close my library and open my inspector right away. And I'm going to drag a new transition into my timeline. This one looks great. Transitions aren't necessary at the beginning or end of every single clip. However, they can be great to tie some more movement or create some more excitement when otherwise a jump cut just won't do it. I've added another transition into my timeline here and what I want to point out is that all of these different transitions may have individual options that we can turn on or off inside the inspector. So I'm going to turn off those circles and arrows and I can continue to work with each of my transitions using the controls inside the inspector. One of the major benefits of using Final Cut transitions are you can preview everything right in the browser before you use it directly in your timeline. This is great because I can preview these different transitions and make decisions very quickly as opposed to having to choose one and constantly replacing them with different experiments. Let's finish this edit with a great circular wipe. I'll play that back and I think that white's a little too bright. 
So in my inspector, I'll change the color by selecting the color well. And when I'm happy with the color, I'll just close the color picker window. And now it's time to review. Let's take a look at one last example and how to use some drop zones inside these transitions. I'm going to be putting together a little bit of a sports promo for this using these different clips. Inside my transitions, I'll choose a new transition and adjust the timing if I need to. I'll have this transition both open and closed, so to quickly make a copy of it, I'll hold on to Alt and drag it to a new location. This works for all clips inside Final Cut and is a huge time saver. Next, I want to create a little bit of a story in between the snowboarder and the snowboarding. So I'm going to drop this transition in between that has a drop zone. I'll adjust the timing of the transition and the timing of the clips. If you've never used drop zones before, they are great. There are little placeholders that you can use to place video or photos into. So I'm going to select that, open my inspector, and then I'll have to click on the drop zone well. Next, we'll have to open up our library again and choose a clip or a photo from our media browser to place inside that drop zone. Before I hit apply clip, I'll jump into the inspector again and use the drop zone pan and scale controls to line it up just right. Next, I'll hit apply clip and I'll play that back to review. Because my archery is going to take place after my snowboarding, it'd be great to have a transition to showcase that. So right down here I've got one that has a little cutaway and says next. Inside the inspector, I can adjust that by changing the color and the controls for the line. And last for this transitional shot. I want to accentuate the bow and arrow and then the shot landing using another transition. I'll place it in between there and then open the inspector and I'll turn off these light tubes. That makes it a little easier to see. Let's take one last look at the final project. So there's just a few different ways to use all the incredible transitions included with M Transitions Mega Pack. Again, my name is Stanislaw with Motion VFX. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.